Lord. Um, we're back with another Sunday School lesson today, and um, we're going to be talking about the Bible. Um, we're going to talk about um, whether the Bible speaks to you, speaks to individuals, or speaks to anybody in the world who wants to hear. So the title of our lesson today is The Bible Speaks to Individuals. The Bible Speaks to Individuals. Um, and the main truth is through the scripture, God speaks to us. Um, did you know that God can speak to you literally? A lot of the time we think that um, uh, um, God, we only talk and God listens. But no, God talks. And he talks a lot if you're listening. So the um, main truth is through the scriptures, God speaks to us. So one of the ways that God speaks to us is through the scriptures. And um, the memory verse is found in Psalm 119, verse 98. It says, through thy commandment has made me wiser than mine enemies, for they are ever with me. Though through thy commandments has made me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. Your enemies are always with you, but God will give you wisdom so that you can go over or uh, 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 be wiser than your enemies. Three points of our lesson is going to be God's word form us. God's word forms us. And then the second point is God's word directs us. And the third point is God's word informs us. Um, three things I want you guys to get out of this lesson. Um, remember, this is um, Facebook. Um, um, you can comment. You can um, text us if you have if we say something that you don't agree with. If you want, um, um, if you want us to clarify some things, um, please don't hesitate. You can write. If you want to critic some things, you can go ahead and do that as well. But three points I want you to get out of this lesson is the first one I want you to seek to impress on your minds and hearts that the importance of reading and studying the Bible individually. It's very important that you read and study the Bible on your own, not listening to somebody else, not talking about it, but actually reading it. And there is a difference between reading, there's a difference between reading and studying, and I'll talk about that later. So that, that's the first point. We want to make sure that you learn, you seek to read and study the Bible. The second point that we want you to come uh, out of this is to um, to appreciate the many benefits that can come from reading and studying and obeying the Bible. There are benefits to reading the Bible, there are benefits to studying the Bible, and there are benefits to obeying the Bible. So I want you to appreciate that point. And then the third point I, I want you to come out of this lesson is to um, engage yourselves in a plan of daily Bible reading and make time to personally study and meditate on Holy Scripture. Um, I used to have that problem all the time. I used to say to myself, well, how do I know what to read when I start reading my Bible? Some people just, oh, they just open the Bible wherever it falls, that's what they read. Don't do that. It's better to have a plan, and there are various plans out there that can help you um, to do a daily reading as well as a daily study of the Bible. So um, the, the Bible reading today is found on Psalm 1, 1, all the way through 11, and then we find, and then we go up to 97 through 104. I'm not going to have time to read it, but as we are going through this, you can read it, and you un you'll understand where I'm coming from, from within the Bible. Um, okay, we're going to start. Introduction to the lesson. Um, the very first thing I want to find out from you is, has God ever spoken to you through the Bible? Has there ever been a time when you were reading the Bible and something jumped at you? Something that you were not even thinking or not even considering? Um, I remember when I was a teenager, I used to be so worried about whether I was going Because in my day, when I was growing up in the 80s, um, Preachers were always talking about the, the coming of Jesus, the end of the world. Um, um, Jesus is coming back. And as a teenager, I used to be so concerned about whether 
if Jesus were to come right now, would I be going up to heaven with him? And it dominated my mind um, 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 to the point that, I mean, I would at night, I would cry, begging God to please let me know whether I was one. By the way, don't do that. Because the Bible says for those who believe, he's giving the power to become. You don't need to worry about your salvation. Your salvation is secure as long as you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and he becomes your savior. But at the time, I didn't understand that. So um, I had issues with that and I had problems. And one day I was reading the Bible and I opened up the Bible and the verse literally jumped at me. When I literally felt the words going in me. Okay, where I, uh, that Jesus says, I died for you. And if, there's, if, if, if there was nobody else on this earth, I would die for you. And Jesus would do that. So th the Bible speaks if you're listening. Amen? So has the Bible ever, has God ever spoken to you through the Bible? Do you find that by continuing to read and study the Bible, it is saying new things about God and yourself? If so, how would you describe your experience and the reasons for it? I just explained to you my experience with it experience with the Bible. As you read the Bible, the word will become alive. The word will become real. And then God will start speaking to you through the Bible. So try it before you say, oh, that can't happen. Try it if you've never had that experience. If you've had that experience, go ahead and comment. Let me know that you've had that experience, that God has spoken to you through the Bible. I know God has spoken to the world through the Bible. Remember the time when they, the world believed that the earth was flat? But the whole time, God was saying the world was round. God was speaking. Amen? But we're just sometimes not listening. So our first point today is God's word forms us. God's word forms us. And someone, is be it begins with the words, blessed is the man. This introduction to the psalm identifies it as a beatitude describing the blessedness of the person whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. That's found in, in, in Psalm 1, verse 1. Blessed is the man. That's how it starts. That's how the verse starts. Blessed is the man who delights in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. To delight in the law or word of the Lord means to take pleasure in reading and understanding what it says. You know, it's so funny. I can read a, re uh, a romance novel, uh, 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 one of those fairy tales, and you thoroughly get into the book. And uh, you, you read it and you, I mean, you eat it up. And then after you read it, when you finish the book, you go back home, you sit back, you lay back, and then you start thinking about the book. Or even a movie, you start thinking about what happened, especially if you enjoyed the book. But that's what God wants you to do with the Bible. God wants you to take that. A lot of the times we sit back, we're trying to find something in the Bible rather than just enjoying the pleasure of reading the Bible, which is what we do in books. When we read a book, we don't look for the end of it. We don't look for what's going to happen next in the next page. No, we read the book and just allow the book to unfold before us and tell us what we're supposed to know. And then after we read the book, then we go back and meditate on it and we think on it. But that's what God wants you to do. Here, to meditate uh, in the law of the word of God comes from a Hebrew word that means to ponder the subject at hand by speaking to oneself in thought about it. Pondering usually means thinking about the significance of something quietly, soberly, and deeply. God wants you to read the Bible, go over, read it, and then after that, ponder on it. Why is this? Why was that said? How is it this way? You know, why would God say that? That's how you ponder on it. It says, blessed is the man who delights in the law of the Lord. If you're reading the law of the Lord, rather than start thinking of God, oh, why is God telling me not to do this? Why is those do nots, do nots? No, one, ponder on it. Ponder on the word. Ponder on, on why would God say that? Think about the time that God said that. Think about how that thing would affect you if you didn't obey that command. Think about if you did obey that command, how would it affect? That's how you ponder on the word. 
obviously the purpose in meditating of the in the word of God is to not only understand what it means but how it may be applied to your own life so let's say for example you're reading the Bible and then um, you go uh, um, to a section where the Bible says um, um, somebody did a certain thing and this is what happened to them so what you do after you finish reading it, you read the story or you read the, the, the part of it, then you start thinking, gosh, um, if I lived in that day, how would that decision affect me? How would I have reacted if I was in that person's place? You know, for example, I think about Abraham um, um, and, um, and, um, and Sarah, and I think about, um, gosh, her name is not coming to my head right now, and um, and, and the, the concubine that gave birth. And I'm like, why? She was a young girl. She didn't have anything to do with this. You know, um, why would Sarah, a woman of God, want to choose a young girl, give her to Abraham? She has a baby, and now she has to suffer for it. See, that's how, then I put myself in her place. If I was in her place, what would happen? How would I feel? Would I hate her? Would I not want to talk to God about it? Would I want to take my kid just like she did and run away? You know, or would I stay, stay put and, and, and obey what was told to me to do so that I can participate? And so that's how you ponder and you meditate. Amen? We receive blessing from God by understanding and applying his word. The word produces within us a blessing, a depth of good that stabilizes our lives, a, a dignity the word cannot comprehend in a constant flow of grace. That's what happens when you, when you meditate, when you read the word of God. First of all, when you read the word of God, you learn how God thinks. You can see the pattern. God has patterns. So you, you can see how God thinks. You can see uh, uh, um, how God would react to certain things. You can see why God does what he does. If you really want to know who God is, for those of you who are skeptical about whether there is a God, the best thing to do is to read the Bible. And then you learn about who God is, whether he's real or not. If, it, if God is real enough, you don't have to fight his battles for him. He can fight his own battles. Go ahead and read the Bible and prove him wrong. See where you come from. Amen? So that's what God does. That, that, that the word will produce a blessing, a depth that would stabilize your life. And it will give you a constant flow of grace. Because once you start understanding God's pattern, then you can live according to that pattern. Blessed of God is the person who chooses to go in the way of life taught by God's word. The person is also blessed by what he or she chooses not to do thus avoiding the consequences that come from intentional sinning. This person chooses not to follow the, the, the counsel, the evil advice of the ungodly. This person chooses not to take stand with stand sinners and not to be allied with those who scorn truth and goodness. The life blessed, favored by God is informed, guided, and nurtured by the word of God. A life nourished by the word is like a tree that thrives and is fruitful because it is planted by a stream of water. Like the tree, the life of one nourished by the word brings forth spiritual fruit in season and does not wither away, but prospers. In this imperfect world cursed by human sinfulness, the best life we can possibly have is found in living by the word of God. That's what the verse says. It says the person who reads the word, who remains in the word, who does not take part with sinners, who doesn't uh, ally itself with evil doers, um, 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 th this person will be blessed. This person will be blessed. Amen? So that was words, the word of God informs us. It forms us. It makes us who we are. As you read the word of God, the word of God will form and shape you into what God wants you to be. Not what the world wants you to be, but what God wants you to be. And while you're at it, not only will God form you, but God will reveal himself to you. He will let you know who he is. What, the, what, what it is that's, that, that, that whoever created you, whoever put you on this earth, 
need to know who he is. Whether he's my God or some other God. If you have another God that created you, that made you who, don't you want to know who he is? Don't you know? Don't you want to know whether it's true or not? Well, absolutely. But once you get in the word, what the word will do is form you, shape you into who you are supposed to be in God. The second point of the lesson is the life not blessed. In contrast to those who love and live by the word of God, the ungodly are not like a striving fruit planted by a stream of water. The ungodly strive in vain to make a life for themselves without God or his word. But in the end, such a life has nothing in it of lasting value. Being like shaft, worth, worthless husk, and trash from grain blown away by the wind. So there's, there's two sides to the story. There's those people who are planted by the river, who God has formed and shaped, and those are the people who are blessed, those are the people who follow after God, and then you have those others who don't particularly care about God, they don't read the Bible, they don't want to have anything to do with God, this is what happens to them. In contrast, those people, they will not be by the water. Those people will be worthless. In other words, they'll be like shafts, they'll be like dust blown by the wind, and no one remembers them. Temporal values are contrasted with lasting values. The ungodly person is at war within, with his or her temptations, trying to outrun his or her conscience, unable to take a stand among God's people. His reputation will not be established. As a present judgment, even before the final day, he is trapped in a lasting pursuit of evil, leading to his own destruction. In contrast, the righteous are known by Yahweh. Here, the Hebrew word for knowing is yada, used throughout the Hebrew Bible as the most intimate form of knowing. God's knowledge spurs all of his action for us, both his covenantal and relation, re relational actions. The fact that God knows us also means he does for us what is best. So you have those people who are not with God, who are not wanting God. Those people, they said, those people are constantly striving to keep up. They have to fight their conscience. Do you know, most of the people out there that are sinning, most of the people out there that you think are having fun, they have to daily fight their conscience. You know, people who are sexing, drugging, um, 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 uh, alcohol, cussing, um, killing, stealing, all of these people, they, they, they on a daily basis have to fight their conscience. It's not easy. It's, it's a lot harder to live a, 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 a sinful life than, it li than to live a, a, a righteous life. The righteous, what do they do? They live, and the only thing they have to do is follow what God says. That's it. But others, the people who are selling drugs, the people who are killing, the pe on a daily basis, they have to fight against themselves in order to keep going. Why? Why would I want to do that? When I could have an easy life planted by the riverside. Amen? Bring fruit in my season. So, um, uh, very important. Blessed are those who read the Bible, understand the Bible, and delight in the law of God, as opposed to those who are not doing that. Both are being shaped, but they're being shaped differently. Amen? Second point, God's word directs us. So the first thing is God's word forms us. So I want to be formed by God. I want to be, I don't want to be deformed. I don't want to be um, 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 somebody who's, uh, who's not straight but crooked. I want to be formed by God as opposed to be formed by myself or by what the world says or by what the enemy or by what my evil ways. I don't want to do that. Second point is God's word directs us. In Psalm 119, is an acrostic poem keyed um, to the 22nd letter of the Hebrew alphabet. So those of you who like poetry, there it is. You can read Psalm 119 as a poem. That is, it is divided into 22 stanzas 
of eight verses each. And the first line of each verse is a stanza begins with the Hebrew letter at the head of the stanza. It is generally believed this po poetic arrangement was used to facilitate memorizing the psalm by singing or chanting. In all but four of the 176 verses of Psalm 119, God's word is mentioned by some terminology. In these first five verses, the word of God is called the law. His testimony, his ways, his precepts, and his statutes. So, um, Psalm 119 begins with the two benedictions. Blessing pronounced on those who walk in the law of the Lord and on those who keep his word and seek him with their whole heart. God's good ways are set in contrast to the evil ways of the unbelieving world and of sinners. Those who live by God's word are directed by his word into his good ways for doing all things. For this purpose, God has commanded us in his word to keep his word diligently. In response to this, uh, uh, um, uh, our continual prayer should be, oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statute. Doing God's will in all things should be our sincere desire. It should be your sincere desire to do God's will. So God's word will direct you. God will show you the way to go. God will teach you the way to go. So um, as you read the law of the, of the word, have, 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 as you read the word of the law, you will know what you need to do and what you cannot do. And as you learn these things, it will direct you in your path. Amen? Um, time is short, so I'm going to skip a little bit. And so I'm going to go from, from um, f God's forming us, God direct us. We're going to go to our third point, which says God's word informs us, which is very important which is very important. We want God's word. We want to we wanna be informed. The Bible says that my people perish from lack of knowledge. What you don't know can hurt you. You know? A lot of people say, oh, what you don't know can't hurt you. Yes, it can. Amen? So we want to make sure that we get informed in the word of God. So um, God's word informs us. It's, um, the, the first part will be growing wiser in the word. There is knowledge that comes to us through the word of God. We can obtain no other way. No amount of learning will suffice to make us sufficient for life. If we are ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth of God's word, with the knowledge that comes to us from God's word, we also receive wisdom from God. This wisdom from God makes us wiser than our enemies. Usually in the Psalms, enemies were real flesh and blood enemies. However, the enemies of the godly have never been only flesh and blood, but also principalities and powers, the rulers of the darkness of this world. Whether our enemies be physical or spiritual, God's word can give us the knowledge we need to be wiser than our enemies. You know, right now we're fighting an enemy that we can't see, the coronavirus. We, we're fighting an enemy that we can't see by staying at home, isolated on our own. We're finding an enemy that we can't see. We're talking about racism and, 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 uh, um, and, and um, uh, inequality. See, God will give you in the word of God. Do you know that there is a nothing on this earth that happens on this earth that is not mentioned in the Bible? Prove me wrong if you can. There is not one thing that is happening that is not mentioned in the Bible. Racism was mentioned in the Bible. Slavery was mentioned in the Bible. Listen, viruses and disease are mentioned in the Bible. Isolation is mentioned in the Bible. Quarantine is mentioned in the Bible. So in this time of age, if we want to learn and we want God to give us wisdom, go in the Bible and find out why. Don't jump and do what the world tells you to do. This is what we do all the time. We react to what other people are doing. Rather than sit back, look over the whole thing, talk to God about it, read the Bible, and get wisdom from God as to what to do next. By wisdom from the world, we are led away from temptation and delivered from evil, the evil one. There's some decisions that we make. The reason why they come off wrong is because we make decisions without knowledge. God will give you wisdom. So that when you make certain decisions, when you take certain actions, that it will be with knowledge and understanding. And that's what the word of God will do. 
The next one would be sweetness of the word. The psalmist expressed his great love for God's law, his word, and therefore made it his meditation all day. Then he testified of the powerful appetite he had for consuming God's word because spiritually, to his mind, heart, and soul, he found the word of God to be sweeter than honey. So significant to this statement, verses 103 might be regarded as the central thought of the stanza under the Hebrew letter Mem, loving God gives to us an appetite for his word. And like Job, we can come to esteem God's word more highly than unnecessary food. God's word is sweet. God's word is good. God's word is, 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 um, is, is, is informative. God's word is learned. But how do you find those things? By reading the word. Read it for yourself. Read it for yourself. Learn the wisdom that you can get from the man, the man who created the heavens and the earth. The Bible calls him the word. His name is Jesus. He is the word. If you want to know how the world was created, then by all means, read the person who created it. If you want to have all knowledge, you know most of the scientists in the olden days, most of the psychiatrists, <clears throat> psychologists, most of the people, all the the, 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 the the painters and all the all of those people who discovered and made big discoveries in, in, in years and years and years ago, all of them found them in the Bible. All of them. Every single thing that was discovered on earth was found in the Bible. Because the Bible has wisdom. The Bible has knowledge. The Bible has understanding. The, the word of God the truth of God is the Bible. And that's how you can learn. Amen? So I'm going to read um, the response to the way it says, highly regarded American statesman Daniel Webster was born in 1782 and died in 1852 said, if there is anything in my thoughts or style to commend, the credit is due to my parents for instilling in me an early love of the scriptures. If we abide by the principles taught in the Bible, our country will go on prospering and to prosper. But if we and our posterity neglect its instructions and authority, no man can tell how sudden a, catast a catastrophe may overwhelm us and bury all our glory in profound obscurity. This is a warning much needed in America today. We see it every day because you know why? One of the reasons why all the stuff is happening today 2020 is because we have led ourselves away from the word of God. We've led ourselves from the knowledge of God. We led ourselves away from the Bible. So now we have nothing to go by. Amen. We have not. And this is a warning of somebody who was born in 1782. 1782. So take the time. Read the Bible. Read the Bible. Don't read it for, for, for studies. Don't read it to argue. Don't read it to prove any point. Just read it and see how God speaks to you. Amen? Send your comments. Let us know what you think. And if you learned something, let us know. Amen? May God bless you.